Hi, I'm standing in the Twin Peaks herd management area in Northern California. This is the largest wild horse and burrow management area in BLM, California. This summer we're planning a gather to bring in excess horses and burrows because we have too many on the range right now and it's not healthy for either the horses, the burrows, or the range that they live on. We manage for a lot of uses out here. Horses and burrows are one of them, as well as cattle and public uh, recreation. So it's important to make sure that we balance all of these uses and, and make sure that we've, we're taking care of the land we're charged to manage. Today we're gonna take you around and show you some of the herd management area. We'll show you some of the areas where the horses and the burrows like to live where they range, what they eat. We might even be able to see horses and burros today. That's our plan. Straddling the Nevada-California border, about 120 miles north of Reno, Nevada, this rugged high desert landscape provides important habitat for wild horses and burros and wildlife. It also provides forage for domestic livestock grazing that is an important part of local economies. The appropriate management level for the Twin Peaks herd management area is 448 to 758 wild horses and 72 to 116 wild burros. The current populations are estimated at 2,300 wild horses, about five times the appropriate management level, and 280 wild burros, about two times the appropriate management level. At almost 800,000 acres, the region is vast, but its resources limited. In fact, many parts of this rugged looking landscape are fragile and require careful management. We're standing here on the edge of the Twin Peaks uh, herd management area. Um, wanted to show you the um, perennial grasses that are out here and explain a little bit as to why they're important. Um, so before me is some crested wheat grass and you'll see that it's, um, it's critical. It's uh, good forage for wild horses and burros. Um, it also serves as um, thermal cover for a lot of the smaller um, species that we have, uh, birds and lizards and things like that. Um, it serves also a purpose of keeping the soil in place. Uh, it uh, helps to bind the soil particles together through the root system and also um, shield the soil, soil particles from raindrop impact. In this part of the HMA, things are higher in elevation, so we end up with more production. Uh, these perennial grasses that you see behind me are uh, plentiful and can provide more forage per acre, whereas other parts of the HMA are lower elevation and you end up with approximately um, 30 acres per one horse a month, and we'll show you that a little later when we get to one of those spots. So here we are in the lower elevation area of the Twin Peaks HMA, and while it certainly is beautiful, looks can be deceiving. This area here would take about 30 football fields, or 30 acres, to support one horse per month. It comes out to be a lot of country when you consider we want about 500 horses in the HMA. There are other uses out here as well, such as pronghorn, mule deer, and permitted livestock grazing. The horses and burros are healthy, and much of the range appears to be healthy as well. A closer look, however, reveals that some areas are showing signs of stress requiring management actions, including reducing the wild horse herd. Limited water and the need to keep water sources healthy are the primary management concerns in Twin Peaks. So we're at Painter Creek now, and this is an area that we would call functioning at risk during our riparian assessments. Um, some of the indicators here as to why things are not properly functioning. Um, you can see the slough banks here. This is due to trampling um, from livestock and horses when they come down in. If the right type of riparian vegetation um, isn't here and the root system isn't um, stable enough to hold the soil in place, you'll actually get it sloughing off, um, destabilizing the banks, and then also causing a decrease in water quality. So there are several reasons why we want to keep riparian areas from um, becoming this degraded, why we want to see them in proper functioning condition and not at functioning at risk. Um, that includes for the health of the wildlife that use the area as well as the health of the Twin Peaks horse herd. Um, it's important to keep this water system available and functioning year round um, since water is such a limiting um, factor in these arid environments. So this is an example of a properly functioning riparian area. Um, some of the indicators that you would look for would be um, riparian species covering the banks, which is what you see here, um, aquatic vegetation throughout the stream channel, clear water that can support wildlife, um, such as the fish and the minnows that you see in the creek behind us, um, as well as stabilized banks. Visited during spring, much of the Twin Peaks area appears vibrant and green, but this situation changes over the course of the summer. Hot weather and the lack of rain reduce the amount of forage available for range animals, including wild horses and burros. To keep ranges healthy, 
the BLM must balance uses at sustainable levels. Livestock are managed in specific areas and allowed on the range for designated grazing seasons. In response to resource conditions, the BLM and ranchers have reduced livestock numbers by about 50% compared to 30 years ago. Wild horses and burros use the range all year. Therefore, herd populations must be maintained at sustainable levels. Balancing uses is part of the BLM's multiple use mandate and responsibility on the public lands. The wild horses are an integral part and an important part of that, uh, of that diversity that's found out on the ranges. However, if their numbers are allowed to increase without management, then eventually it will come to damage not only the resources and the other uses on the ranges, but the wild horses themselves. The Twin Peaks has always had the ability to, to carry some horses. When numbers get very, very high, um, you can really run into problems. What, what in effect happens is that more animals end up being at risk and can, there can be a setup for catastrophic losses either from a long-term drought or heavy snow. You know, we're proud of the fact that we have healthy wild horses and burros on the Twin Peaks herd management area. It's important to us to be proactive and make sure that we keep the horses and burros within an appropriate management level. Therefore, we come out and every few years we have to remove the excess horses and burros. And that helps us ensure that the horses and burros remain healthy as well as the rangelands that they like to roam on. The wild horses and burros that we remove off the Twin Peaks herd management area all go to good homes. Some of them are adopted out. They are very popular for their size and their health. And some of them go to long-term pastures. It's important to BLM that these wild horses and burros do end up in good homes or in the long-term pastures where they can spend the rest of their lives. As public land managers, our job is to manage wild horses and burros on the range to keep both the horses and burros healthy as well as the range lands. And we welcome and encourage your involvement in that work. It takes all of us together to make sure that we're doing the right thing by the horses and the burros and the land.